Good day, dear students. Welcome to a module concerning and learner support one. This subject is across the following programs ACS, ACP, DES, DCE, DSE, DPP, DJP, and DE. This contact session is based on assignment for 2018. My name is Aina Simpson and my contact number is 081-2457-456. My email is ainasimpson at gmail.com. Welcome to the module. Welcome to Counseling and Learner Support Subject Content. I am your tutor and tutor marker, responsible to mark your assignment of this, of this subject. I wish you all to be hardworking, dedicated, and self-driven students in this course, meaning that you need to take the ownership of your own study and work hard through your study guide as well as other resources or sources that you may find need to answer some questions or to help you answer some questions. This presentation will take you through the subject content as well as, as assignment information. At the end of the presentation, general guidelines are provided to keep in mind when writing academic work or assignment. The subject overview has this message. It helps us as world of teacher education and counseling and learner support. As a teacher, you are expected to understand the well-being of children and adolescents in order to help them. Information learned in this module should achieve a holistic view of teaching practices and learning. Educational institutions need to counsel and support learners to promote emotions and skills that enable learners to benefit most from their education. You need to understand the learner that you are dealing with. You do not choose what area of the learner that you need to understand, but rather to understand the learner as a whole, as it says in a holistic view. Counseling and support services help learners to understand themselves better, discover personal abilities and development goals. The subject also assists learners to understand themselves. They need to know who they are and what their personalities are and what their goals are and how to develop their goals. Exit learning outcomes are very important to know what to do you expect to know in a specific unit. In our module we have um, exit learning outcomes. This is very important. It is information that you need to know. When you get to a specific unit, then you know what is expected of me to know in this specific unit. Before I attempt the assignment questions, study the verbs, thinking processes at the beginning of the study guide to assist with understanding the question demand. It's very important that we learn or we understand the verbs in a question or the keywords in question so that we do not go out of, of the way to give or to provide answers which do not answer the questions. That is what it's meant by saying um, study the verbs that we find at the beginning of the sentence. If you are asked to describe or you are asked to discuss or analyze or outline, then you should understand what is expected of you to do. This is how some of the students happen to lose marks because they do not really get to understand the question demand. Assignment questions are included in the presentation 
to make it easier for students to follow where to get information. This does not mean that when you have questions in within the presentation, you are going to do cut and paste copy and paste from the study guide. You need to read and get information, go back to the question and try to understand it so that you know what is expected of you to answer, what is the demand of the question. You do not just go to a certain page because you have seen a word which is in the question and then you go to that specific unit, you start copying. That will not earn you marks. It is advisable not to reproduce the study guide by copying the answers. If you try to copy the answers from the book, then you will not get marks because this is not what the question wants you to do. The question is sending you out of your way to find different sources and try to answer the questions the way it has been asked. Let us look at a few aspects from units not all will be discussed. So there are few things that are left out, but it is your duty as a student to go through your guide and read everything. The time we have is not um, enough for us to cover everything, but at least more will be um, included in the presentation. But then the rest you need to take a lead of your own study. Let us look at study unit one. Approach and the fa and phases of counseling of learners. An American psychologist, Carl Rogers, from that uh, year, developed a personal-centered approach to counseling that changed the tradition, directive, and interpretive practice of therapy. He prefers to the term client to patient. This approach focused on the person, not the problem. Its goals are to increase the client's self-esteem and to foster greater openness to experience. The therapist's role is to, re to reverse the situation by increasing a person's self-worth and reducing the level of incongruence between the ideal self and actual self. So the American psychologist felt that instead of calling the person to be assisted, in this case the learner, to call this learner a patient, he prefers that we call the learner the client. You are the person to work with the client, and in this case we are referred to the learner. And also, we are not, he is not looking at the problem, he is looking at the person, how to develop the person, how a person can develop self-esteem and how the person can be open to his or her problems and to find solution to these problems. And look at what is it that the person needs to understand. The client is responsible, for, is responsible to, for improving his or her life. The therapist, this is now in this case it's you, the teacher who is the counselor, creates an environment where the client feels safe and not under judgment. When you are to, to work with a learner, first of all you need to create an environment where a learner has to be free to work with. It should not be a place where the, the, the learner will feel or the client will feel threatened or will feel that not very comfortable to work with you. It facilitates the opportunity for clients to define and clarify their own goals and findings their own solution problems. Its fundamental belief is that people normally tend to move toward growth and healing the approach works well in the classroom and can be implemented with individuals and groups with techniques such as listening, accepting, understanding, and sharing. When working with the clients, the learner, as I stated earlier, 
you need to understand that they need to find a way of understanding their own problems. They need to know what are their goals, what do they want to do, and to find ways how to solve their own problems. And the idea of this approach is also to help them to grow towards healing. Look, let's say they, uh, a learner has a problem. You only work with a learner to guide the learner in order to for the learner to identify the solution to the problems he has, not you to provide answers to the client, but rather to guide the client to identify areas how to go about um, solving his or her problems. Such an approach can be used for an individual or it's suitable for an individual or it can also be used by a group of of, 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 of learners. And techniques that are involved are listening, accepting, understanding, and sharing. When you are talking to the client, you should be able to listen attentively, you should be able to accept them the way they are, you should be able to understand what they are going through, what the problems is or are, and should be able to share with them. So it does not mean that when they have a problem, then you cannot work with them, you may, but then not to provide answers for them, but rather to guide them so that they find a way to solve the problems they are going through. Then we have another um, psychologist, uh, B.F. Skinner, considered the father considered as the father of the behavior approach this approach is a theory of learning based on the idea that all behaviors are acquired through conditions for any behavior to occur there should be there should be a learning that takes place there should be a condition it caused by something Conditioning occurs when, uh, through interaction with the environment, when you are in the environment, either you learn positive things or you learn negative things. And those conditions will then create a certain behavior. We learn new behavior through classical or operant, operant conditioning, collectively known as learning theory. When we are talking of behavioral approach, we are talking of learning theory. Behaviorists believe that our responses to environmental stimuli shape our actions. For you to learn something, whatever you, 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 you learn, at the end of the day, it will definitely shape your action. It will change your action, how you, you go about something. The behavioral approach emphasizes learning processes and the uh, alter, altering of external influences to facilitate change in behavior. The outcome goals of treatment are set by the client. When we are looking at the goals, the outcome treatment, whatever will be at the end, will be set by the client, assisted by the counselor. As I stated earlier, or as I mentioned earlier, it's only, you are only there to guide the client, but not to provide answers or to give um, ways as to, this is how you should tackle your problem. But you rather guide the client in order to find solution to the problem. Behavior approach to discipline and goal-directed Tasks work better in the classroom. General goals are to create new conditions for learning and to increase personal choice. Behavioral approach to discipline. This is, help, this is done to help the learner so that the learner has a way or a direction into working better in the classroom as well as also working with others and learn new conditions and also this will increase the learner's choice of what the learner wants to do and how to approach the problem. 
Operant condition techniques are used to change overt behaviors shown when teachers exercising discipline in class. Both approaches have objectives and how can they be applied in classrooms by teachers. When we are talking of these conditions and techniques, they are used by teachers when they exercise discipline in class. And when we go back to your study guide, we will find that these conditions has objectives. They also have a part which, which explains to us how they can be used by teachers in a classroom. And so in other words, when a teacher is carrying out a task on discipline, this is also part of it. Reinforcement techniques, positive, praising, rewarding for good behavior, and also there are negative, which are stopping, removing, and avoiding negative outcomes. We are looking at two different things here, two different areas, positive and negative. As you are dealing with, uh, with your client and you would love to discipline them, you would discipline them in different ways. And now you reinforce, you, you, get to, you get them to do certain things and realize that this is good or this is, this is not good. And then by either when the learner has done something good, you can praise the learner, you can reward, you can, you can uh, um, look at the good behavior that a child has um, shown. And also when that learner misbehaved or has done something which is unacceptable, you can stop the learner or you can also remove whatever the learner likes to do or you can exclude him from uh, taking part in a certain activity together with, um, with his class, classmates. And that will teach him or her a lesson and remind him that whenever I have done this, I better not do it because I will be excluded from taking part in this activity. The negatives are used to increase uh, desires behaviors. Educational concepts often used in the learning process. So with the operant um, conditioning, we are looking at the reinforcement which has positive and negative. Then um, the writings which appears to be in uh, smaller letters point out clearly the difference between personal centered approach and behavioral approach provide the characteristics of the two approaches. This is one of the questions that appears in your assignment. So what is expected of you to do here is to provide the difference between the two approaches by providing the uh, characteristic for you to say personal centered deals with this and it is like this and this and this. So the same as you do with the behavioral approach. That is what is expected of you to do in answering this question. And not only your study guide that have answers to this, you can find different sources which can help you to understand the question better or to understand the content better. The phases of the counseling process. With the phases of the counseling process, we have establishing relationship, assessment, setting goals, interventions, and termination. When we are looking at this process, what is it that you need to do first when you are to counsel a learner? So the process is that you have to establish the relationship. You have to build a relationship with the learner or with your client so that you, the, 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 the client, has um, start to believe in you because if the client does not believe in you there is no way you will talk to a client and make sense out of any what you would want to say and after building the relationship you can assess now the situation which you will possibly hear from the 
the learner and then you get you set goals of what is to be done then if there is any intervention if there is if you think there is anything that need to be done that's now the intervention and if you think that you have done your best and you could still not assist the client as it's expected then you can terminate the process by terminating the process you end there and inform the client that I have done this but I think I can refer you to someone else who can take it further. That is how it should be done. Unlike you sitting and try to to do everything knowing that you are not getting anywhere. And in that way you are not really helping the client, you are in fact damaging the client. The attitudes of a good counselor how does a good counselor look like or what is what are the characteristics of a good counselor know themselves they need to rest to have a respect they need to appreciate themselves be authentic be original have a sense of humor all this need to be seen in a counselor principles of educational rights of learners learners we have they have rights to education and their rights to equality, they have the, the right should be in the best interest of the child, has to prevail, and the right to life, the development, and respect for children's own ideas. So as much as we are adults, these children also have their rights, and their rights need to be respected. That was all what we had in Unit 1. And let us look at Unit 2, Basic Counseling and Namibian Referral Procedures. Identification of children in need of counseling services to improve their situation. When we are looking at the basic counseling, we are trying to identify learners or our clients who are in need of counseling. For any learner to be in need of counseling, we are looking at different warnings. For example, emotional warnings, whereby a child has been a happy child, and all of a sudden, this child decided to withdraw. He is just quiet. He does not talk to anybody. He does not take part into any activity in the school and even at home or elsewhere. Or we are looking at behavioral signs the child is, he just became a bully, beating all other children. Let's take an example of a child who is always, whenever you see this child among others, then one or two children will be crying simply because this child is there. Those are the, some of the signs that we look at. We also have um, um, social warning signs where um, a child does not, um, or just want to be, by himself or we are looking at physical signs physical warning signs where a child's body look otherwise that the child is always have scars and all that so we have quite a number of of different signs that one can look at in order to determine that this learner or this person need to have uh, counseling sessions basic counseling skills with basic counseling skills, listening and observation, paraphrasing and clarifying the problem, sending signals of acceptance, questioning and summarizing, taking concrete and specific, using open-ended sentences, role play, what if game, storytelling, music and art therapy, metaphors and working with parents. When we are doing the counseling, there are certain basic skills that are guiding us. You should be able to listen and observe when you are doing this. You must have these skills of able to listen and you are able to observe this particular learner. And when you are uh, working with the learner, you should be able also to paraphrase and clarify the problem. Let's say the learner open up to you and tell you a certain situation that a child is going through. You should be able to retell what you have heard from the child so that this child is able to correct you for you not to take the 
to change the information the way you heard them. And then you should be able to to clarify the problem, you should be able to send signals of acceptance, you should be able to ask questions, you should be able to summarize what you have heard. All these are part of basic counseling skills. You need to have certain skills in order to be a good counselor. Remember, in Unit 1, we talk of the... We, we, we mentioned the, the characters or the attitude of a good counselor. A good counselor should be like this and that and that and that. But now we are talking of what skills do the counselor need to have. Then you should be able to listen, you should be able to paraphrase, you should be able to summarize and all this. Retelling the stories and, and do music and art, therapies, metaphor, working with parents and so on. So we need to differentiate this and many a times Students get confused of the attitude of the counselor with the basic counseling skills. Skills is what you are able to do, while the attitude is what you are. That is the difference of the two. Choosing a career, knowing yourself and getting to know the occupation. When you are choosing a career, you need first of all need to understand who you are. And secondly, you need to know what occupation do you want, what type of job that you would want to do. You cannot just decide that tomorrow you want to become this while you know that yourself you are not able to. There are some areas that we need to know and understand that you cannot just simply do. Referral procedures of the counseling process in Namibia that include learners with learning difficulties, special education needs. When we refer learners for counseling process, we are looking at learners with learning difficulties, we are looking at special education needs where these learners need to be referred to for further assistance. Educators should be able, should be aware how to detect learners with disabilities at an early stage. It's very important when we are able to do this so that it is not a, it does not become a barrier in the child's life when it is not um, detected earlier. Detected, being it detected earlier, it helps the learner and also other teachers who will be working with them or her to find the right um, information and programs that a child need to take. Educators should be also to be knowledgeable about intervention for appropriate care and placement of impaired learners, arrangement for compensatory or remedial education. It's very important once you identify the, 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 the issue around the child, then you should be able to find the, um, the correct services that a child may need. In this case, it could be the child can be placed in a school for impaired. We have different impaired within education. The child could be visual impaired, can be hearing, or it can be intellectually, and also we have the learners with, learn, with specific learning difficulties. So if all this identified early at an early stage, then the learners can be placed in correct schools or in correct centers. Alternative programs for, to, to learners with severe learning needs, the alternative programs when we are talking of severe learners, we are talking of learners who are unable to assist themselves. We are talking of learners who are, are challenged intellectually. We have two government schools that deals with this type of learners. In Winduk, we have um, Dachbreak and then uh, Morrison. There are, also, there are also some other private schools or private centers which deals with such severe learning cases. Because a learner who is um, 
When we are talking of the intellectual impairment, we include now the autism who are not able to talk. We have the Down syndrome. Of course, Down syndrome, they do talk, but then slow and in a different way and so on. So such learners need to be in a different center where they can function in, in their way. Work ethics include the set of moral principles an employee uses in his or her job. There are work ethics that we need to follow in order to be when we want to be employed. Explain the concept work ethics to a newly appointed educator who just joined your school. First of all, you need to understand what work ethics are. There are principles that we need to follow, what we need to do right, what we are expected to do as a worker. And then now you are appointed, you are given a task to explain to this newly person. So for some of the programs, you could have the, 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 the study guides may not be merged quite enough, but then it is your duty to go out of your way so that you find information from other sources that you may use in order to understand the work better and also provide the correct answers, which are enough depend on the mark allocation for that specific question. Study unit three, the holistic approach to learning support. Ecological pers perspective of Bronfenbrenner, micro, meso, exo, macro, and chrono system. We are looking at these systems which is surrounding which surrounded the child. The child is at the center. How are the different systems get to assist a child? Or how are the different systems has to, 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 to work with the child and how close are they? When we, we start with the micro, which is talking about the immediate people to a child. The immediate people to a child, this is the family, because the child belongs to that. And after the family, with extended families, then we have the next group, which or the next system, or next level, which is meso, where we find the school, churches, and other organizations. So it goes. It is very important that you find different sources that explain this further so that you understand the work as to what is expected for me to understand. When you have a child, the child does not live in isolation. The child lives within different systems. Related, relate the barriers to learning to a holistic approach to learning support. How do we assist learners? We are looking at different areas where learners find themselves and how do we assist a learner as a whole? That is very important. And what are the barriers that, or what are those uh, factors which stop or hinder the child to learn? We have quite a number of them. It can be the environment, it can be the school itself, it can be um, the family and so on. So those are the areas that we need to look at. The multidimensional model of human development, medical and social model of disabilities and learner support, principles of planning sub learner support programs, steps of the individualized model IEP of learner support. Now we are looking at um, how does the learner develop. For a learner to develop, there are different areas that are involved. There are different factors. And how is this child related himself to other people? The relationship, we are looking at the relationship of the child, of the learner and the family, the relationship of the learner and the teacher, the learner and, um, 
and peers, for example, a learner in the community. All this we need to know and we need to understand that this is how a learner needed to, to behave and also to be assisted. Then we are looking at principles of planning learner support programs. If they are to come up with a learner support programs, it, there is need to, to plan about it. By planning this, we now need to look at what can be done, who are the stakeholders. Of course, we have the learner, but who else need to be there? And why should they be there? And what do we need to look at? Then we get to steps of the individualized model, the IEP of learner support. When you are to plan and, and, and come up and design an IP. Uh, program for a learner, then you need to understand the learner first and assess the situation of what is it that a learner need to be assisted with and that is what you are planning for. And a learner cannot have an IP, cannot have a program which is similar to another learner. They could be, they could, they may look like they have the same problem but you still need to go further and get to understand what could be the problem of john which is not the same as mary so those are very important it don't just come up to say they both cannot read fine if they both cannot read that's okay but what is it that they cannot read because one of them could be able to read and the other one could be able to read but can't make sense of what he or she has read so that makes a difference already study unit four how to counsel and support learners regarding some life skills we are talking of life lessons here managing emotions in life and interpersonal conflict we are looking at how learners can be supported to have a, meaning, a, a meaningful life. A learner and any other person have emotions, have feelings, being low or being high or being what type of emotions. And also interpersonal conflict, this learner can also be in conflict or, or in a misunderstanding with another person and this is what they need to be taught, how to behave when you feel down or when you think you somebody make you angry, how do you approach that? And then looking at the conflict, how can you solve a problem when you have a misunderstanding with either a teacher or a peer or with a family member and so on? They need to understand what is it that they need to do. Problem solving process to solve many problems in life. Planning how to overcome an obstacle, one must be aware of what a problem is and what needs to be done to find a solution. This is very important that we need to know when you are to solve a problem, first of all, you need to know what a problem is and you need to know how to go about it and what does what what should be done in order to solve the problem you don't solve a problem with a problem describe the problem solving cycle in order to make it easier in finding a solution first of all you have the problem and then you look at what is it that i need to do in order to find a solution to this problem Influences of key values on a person's life and choices. The role of values in self-concept, peace of mind, interpersonal relations, social acceptance and status, and in, and, and, and in staying out of trouble. We are looking at the values, key values. What is it that a person need to know in life. What type of life do you want to live and what choices have you made? What is the role? What what is the, the role of the of the counselor towards a learner? And then we look at self-concept. What is it 
get to know yourself in and out before you start helping other people. Have peace of mind. Know what you want. Interpersonal relations. How do you communicate with other people? And how are you accepted in the society? And all this need to be known. We are looking at the values of a person and how to choose a better life for yourself. Unit study five, key challenges experienced by learners. What are the learners experiencing as challenges? Strategies for preventing learners from dropping out of school. We are looking at what are the challenges that our learners are facing. At times, or many a times, we had and we have in our schools learners who are leaving schools. They drop out of school. What could be the cause? Factors that cause may that may, that cause anxiety in learners are genetic factors. With the genetic factors, we have the heredity and temperament. We have physical recreation drugs, drug withdrawal, poor nutrition somatic symptoms, headaches, stomach pains, and muscle tends. Environmental, that was the generic factors that could, that learners could experience, that could also cause them to drop out of school. And then we have the, the physical recreation, then we have the environmental. With the environmental, we are looking at family life and childhood, cumulative stress, which is abuse, adverse life effect, events, death in the family. Though those are the, the factors in the environment that can also become a challenge to children. We have a behavioral behavioral challenges or factors, lifestyle, high intake of, in, of recreation drugs, poor nutrition, and a lack of exercises but pressure that put pressure on the body. So we are looking at, when we are talking of environment, what factors are there within the environment? What factors are there within gene genetic uh, factors? What factors are there regarding physical or behavioral. So these are the areas that we need also to pay attention to, not only to say who, who has dropped out of school, who, who has a problem, but we never looked at what, type, what, what factors might have caused that. Medical conditions. Medical conditions include physical disabilities, hyperventilation syndrome, hyperglycemia, when the, uh, uh, this, this has to do with, with, with medical conditions that um, a learner may face some, some sickness or some sort of sickness that could make it not possible for the learner to attend school. And then we have the psychological. With the psychological factors, we have negative, unrealistic, and irrational thinking patterns, unhealthy belief, thoughts about self, others and the world views, a focus on fear and negativity, suppressed emotions, lack of self-esteem, lack of assertiveness and lack of meaning in life. All these are factors that could challenge the learner or that could that learner could experience which can bring a challenge to their drop out in school the following have impact on learners lives and learning socioeconomic deprivation poverty poverty as socioeconomic status learners from low uh, socioeconomic homes physical development and health, family, neighborhood, psychosocial development, and learning abilities. The socioeconomic deprivation, it includes all those. 
Elena from a single parent home, Elena who do not who have um, different type of neighborhood, all this may influence and break come up as a challenge to the life of the learner. Share the experience, the impact of poverty on a learner's learning ability and school performance to a team from the Ministry of Education. You are now tasked to share the experience, the impact of poverty on a learner's uh, learning ability and school performance to a team from the Ministry of Education. You have the team from the Ministry of Education and they would want to know what are the impact of poverty on a learner's learning ability. Then you should be able to tell, first of all you look at the learner and then you look at the environment where the learner stays, you look at the learner what the learner is doing and look at what the learner is able to do if there were no such uh, factors. Then I'm sure if you have to tackle it that way, the team from the Minister of Education would be happy about to hear about that. Interpersonal relationships of learners. Now the relationship of learners, we are also looking at what, that, what type of relationship the learner has with the relatives, what type of relationship the learner has with peers, with educators, in this case teachers, and also with others in society. It's also play a role for us to know what is that that the learner need to know and what relationship the learner has with them just mentioned uh, groups. Le study Unit 6, the practice of good discipline with children. Adolescence and self-discipline, consequences of developing self-discipline in adolescence. How do we assist learners to be self-disciplined? There are different ways and different ways how a learner should be able to discipline himself. A lender who is always on his own, he would be able to work by himself. He would be able to be disciplined. But a learner who is always cling on the mother or cling on any other adult will not be able to stand by himself or will not be able to discipline himself. We have quite a number of information around that. Compare autocratic and democratic approaches to disciplining learners. When we are to discipline learners, we can either make use of autocratic, where you as a counselor, the teacher, you are the only person who have a say in the classroom. That's autocratic. What you say is right and nobody should question. Whereas in the democratic, learners are given an, a chance to also air their views, and they, 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 they learn more because they are free to ask questions and they are free to say what they would want to say and suggest at the same time. Acceptable discipline techniques. We have discipline which are acceptable. Not all discipline are acceptable. If you decide to discipline a child by by administered corporal punishment, that is unacceptable. But if you are to talk to a learner, make the learner understand what the problem is and what are the consequences after the learner has done something wrong, I think that it would be acceptable because the learner, the idea is to teach this very learner to understand that I cannot do this because this will be the outcome of what I have done wrong. Consequences of unacceptable discipline techniques will also be discussed and then discuss how a teacher would deal with bullies in the classroom. First of all, you need to understand what a bully is or who is a bully before you get to talk about how a teacher would deal with a bully. First of all, understand the term bully and then try to then analyze how best a teacher can deal with such a bully. 
the lender who is always beating others, who always know the best, who always want to intimidate others, and so on. Explain some unacceptable discipline techniques often used by teachers in dealing with problem learners. Teachers can also be guilty in this part where they uh, make use of unacceptable discipline techniques. The idea is to discipline a child, but what they do, what they use, is what makes it to be unacceptable. So explain some of them. Study Unit 7, Nutrition, Nutrients and Related Health Disorders. Definition of concept, malnutrition, as a health indicators and its examples. You need to understand what is malnutrition. And malnutrition is used as a health indicators which tells that this learner need to have food. Already by looking at some who are malnutrition, who are under nutrition, then you should be able to tell that mm -mm, here this learner needs to have food or this person needs to, to have this. Macronutrients and micronutrients and their functions in a diet. Why do we need them? What are they? What do we need to? Why can we not eat the same food every day in, day out? Adequate nutrition and nutrition-related disorders or sickness or diseases. We need to understand why we need nutrition and why do we have diseases which are caused because of lack of nutrition. Practices that support physical health how to support learners with eating disorders. We do have learners who have eating disorders and how best can you assist this particular learner? Possibly together with his or her parents too. Compile the activities for a day and demonstrate how you will implement practices that support physical health in the following aspects. We are looking at how can you implement these practices. You have a day with the learners out or the children to a specific place. Now you need to implement practices that support physical uh, health in the following aspects. You need to implement personal hygiene, health exercise, rest and recreation, health eating habits, and absten abstinence from harmful, subs harmful substance and activities. As you answer this question, you need to go through these different uh, practices and this aspect need to be explained into detail so that you earn yourself marks. You do not just talk in general. The aspects are given and you follow them. First of all, before you answer these questions, you need to have read and understood the aspects before you attempt the question. Study Unit 8. The prevention and treatment of learners affected and infected with HIV AIDS and AIDS, the factors that contribute to HIV transmission and how new infection can be, trans can be prevented. We are looking at factors that contribute for any other person to contract this disease, what could have been done and how new infections can be prevented. Let's say the person has been already infected. What it can be done for this person not to be reinfected again? That is what is meant by infection, new infection can be prevented. 
Impact of HIV and AIDS on communities. Now that we are living in a community where people are HIV positive, what impact, what problems will that bring to the community? Of course, when people become sick, they will not go to work. Of course, when people are sick, they will not have an income. So those are the impacts, and those are not the only two. You can still find a lot. Caring for and supporting of children affected and infected with HIV AIDS. How do we take care of these children who are affected and infected? When they are affected, they are living with the diseases. And when they are when they are infected, they are living with the disease. When they are affected, that is when they have a close relative being a parent or a, any person close to them who became sick. Then in that way they are affected. But infected, it is in them. The disease is in them. Difficulties faced by HIV and AIDS orphans at school supposed to be at school and home. This, uh, this type of, 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 of children, they face difficulties. At times they do not have food because no one is providing food for them. At times they do not have money, they do not have any income, and they have to do the chores on their own, house chores on their own. They also need to they, 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 they don't have any guidance. So all these are the, 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 the difficulties that they are going through, and those are not the only ones. You can still find quite a number. Critical discuss these statements. The effect children from HIV and AIDS families have on a community. The difficulties faced by AIDS orphans. So we are looking at the often children and the community, what effect does this have on them? The effect of children from HIV and AIDS families have on a community. When you have, now you have a child, then you have the community, then you think around what could be the problem. This is the child who lives by himself or who do not have parents anymore or who just witnessed the parents passing on because they have been sick. So what could be the difficulties that they are facing? Of course, they are uh, um, called names, they are being intimidated and so on. So those are some of the things that you could. Assignment is a form of assessment, therefore students are requested to follow the questions demand in order to provide quality work. That is very clear. Students are requested to study the verbs, as I said earlier, in verbs or keywords in questions for better understanding of the work. Also, look at the mark allocated per question in order to determine the length of the answers needed. It's very important that we understand the verbs, we understand the, the keywords within our questions, and also to read first before you start answering the questions. As you answer the questions, you need to look at the length, at the demand, what is the demand of the question, and what are the marks allocated for that specific, so that specific question, so that you do not give the long answers or too short answers. Need work is expected from students. This has been an issue when students are to submit the work and you do not know where to look at. Do it with love. Know why you are doing it. Should you intend to type the assignment, kindly make use of Arial font size 12. Some of you would love to have network or plan to have network because you lack experience of typing then people submit assignments which are typed in different font sizes one is like one sentence is 10 the other sentence is size 12 the other sentence is size 14 then you do not know which one is which 
Do not make use of any color to decorate the assignments. There are some students who made it possible to have their assignments decorated. That is just not acceptable. You write it in black and white, and that's that. You have your correct answer, you scoop your marks. Do not submit loose pages. Staple them in correctly incorrect number pages. It's also advisable that after writing your assignments, make sure that each page has a number. You number your pages because sometimes when we receive assignments, then you do not know which page is this this uh, 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 assignment, which to which assignment this page belongs because there is no number, there is no a student number there is nothing i suggest that you write your student number on each page as well as the page number so that should anything happen to your assignment that the pages fall apart then at least one should be able to trace that it belongs to student number who who do not copy each other's work to submit it as your own or make copies of study guide pages handouts and submit them as an assignment it happens sometimes the person just go especially now that people can google they go on webs different websites they get the information they submit them as they are that is unacceptable do not forget to proofread your work and check the language used before you submit to avoid losing marks Feel free to contact me should you experience any problems regarding the assignments. You may call on Mondays to Thursdays from 2.30 to 8 o'clock in the evening. Saturdays, 10 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the evening. And Sundays, the same time. Sunday, 12 to 8 o'clock. That was our presentation on the upcoming assignments for 2018 for Counseling and Learner Support 1. Wishing you all the best.